Hi guys, it's Yashi. Welcome back to Crypto News Today. Let's get right to it. Let me start recording. And boom, Coindesk. Hong Kong wants to be a crypto hub again. We saw Hong Kong pretty much mentioned across every single update I made in the past week. These guys keep on accentuating the fact that they want to help investors, they want to certify investors, and they want to talk to companies and work with them. Really good news. These guys want to become one of the major hubs in China at this pace. I mean, I feel like they're paying now article companies to post about it because they really want to push it out there. It's amazing. Which is good news. I love the city. I love the people out there. It's a pretty cool situation. And they always have been ahead. I think they want to be the first ones. Number two, crypto exchange Deribit loses 28 million hot wallet hack positive withdrawals. This is a perfect example of why you should not have a hot wallet. Or you should have a hot wallet, but store your stuff in a cold wallet. Night is, I mean, the exchange pretty much released information saying that 99% of the money of their investors is stored in cold wallets. This was a little hack that happened only on the hot wallet. They paused all the withdrawals by all the customers just to fix stuff up. But again, this is a perfect example of why it is risky to have your money in a hot wallet. On to the next one, Singapore. DBS explains how big banks can implement DeFi too. In the article, they start saying how Singapore has been playing with DeFi with both government um, created central currencies like the Japanese yen, uh, they tried both with normal currencies and uh, CBDCs, uh, and how they used different blockchains. They talk about Ethereum, public blockchain, overlay system, Polygon, DeFi landing platform, Aave, and Uniswap. They've been playing. This is the government. This is not a person. This is not a single individual or private companies. This is the government working with big banks and doing testing. And this is pretty advanced. I mean, if you think about what they're talking about in, Amer in American legislation, these guys are way ahead from some perspectives. Last but not least on Coindesk, Rogue Actor disrupts Lightning Network with single transaction. Rogue Actor has been, uh, this guy has been literally playing around with uh, the Bitcoin um, blockchain uh, on the connection of the Lightning nodes. I don't want to get too much into the detail of it. Uh, basically, he was able to halt uh, um, the Lightning Network uh, for a few hours. Uh, uh, then, of course, the general consensus if, um, kind of fixed it up. I don't want to go too detailed in this, will bore you to death. Fact is, uh, um, they were still able to play around with a connection to the Bitcoin Network, not with the Bitcoin Network directly. Now onto crypto news. This crypto signal platform is bringing expert trading tools to the masses, best pre-sale coin. Of course, a little bit of, uh, let's say, shilling here. However, uh, we saw the platform dash to trade uh, on articles in the past two weeks. Uh, um, in the first week, uh, they were talking about a $1 million pre-sale. Last week, it was 2.5. Now we are at 3.5. Is it exploding? No, but it's gaining momentum, it's gaining interest. This is a, a crypto signal trading platform uh, based on, on signals, uh, so a little bit more advanced than a normal platform. We'll see how it will perform once everything is live and being used by the masses. Because the question is, can a less expert be able to use it easily? Of course, not a noob, you don't want to play with signals if you're a noob, but if you have a general idea, is it easy to use? That is the big question. Number two, leading global payments network MoneyGram to offer cryptocurrency services. Guys, I I had that experience with MoneyGram, but I understand why people use it. Uh, it was basically the platform to transfer money from state to state, like if you're sending money to your family because you were living in America or stuff. And now they're also offering cryptocurrency which makes sense, like of all the players out there, this is probably one of the most plausible companies to start offering cryptocurrency services to see if they will integrate with CBDCs or with USDC. Yeah, they mentioned USDC, so that's good. You're almost, not saying 100%, but almost able to transfer money that can easily be transferred again into real money, into fiat money. New York-based investment firm Coin Fund looking to invest 250 million in crypto startups. Again, find fintech uh, trying to invest into uh, into cryptocurrencies uh, and the future of cryptocurrencies. Really good, really interesting. If you have this big inflow of money, you will see innovation. 
Lucky Block competition platform giving away a Lamborghini. I know this is a stupid article, but I, I used to work for Lamborghini. If you know me, if you have been seeing me for a while, um, interesting to see how they're trying to integrate NFTs with an incentive to win a Lamborghini. The thing is how it works, win a Lambo with Lucky Blocker. All you have to do is grab a PRC NFT now, follow the link below and go miss out. Basically probably that a winner will be um, given out in the future. Interesting to see, funny to see that they're trying to integrate the uh, NFTs with real, um, let's say assets or cards. A Lamborghini is more of an asset than a liability, if you do it properly. Not financial advice. Last but not least, Cointelegraph. A BNB chain DeFi ecosystem recovers almost one third in three months. One of the DeFi side of things, uh, on the DeFi side of things, BNB chain suffered 93% decrease, decrease from Q3 2021, but it's since shown signs of steady recovery. Probably also because of uh, all the old coin creations we saw in the past couple of months picking up uh, based on events like Halloween or um, Elon Musk and Twitter. Many people started using the BNB smart chain again because it's easier to build coins on top, uh, it's less regulated. Uh, and with that, if you create uh, coins there, people who want to invest in it have to buy BNB and then swap it into that. So there was a lot of transaction added because of these events. Not only, of course, generally speaking, the market, I believe, is preparing itself for a bull market. But BNB is always the first one to quickly push out coins whenever there is a good good time to do so. MicroStrategy CEO, this is general good news for Bitcoin and crypto. MicroStrategy CEO reiterates uh, long-term Bitcoin play in Q3 earnings. MicroStrategy was one of the biggest, let's say, public buyers out there, uh, public bull, bullish people on Bitcoin. And they simply reiterate the fact that they're keeping their Bitcoin and uh, it will have a long-term uh, let's say, hopefully, uh, good impact over their investments. That's what they said during the Q3 call uh, a few days ago, but um, it's positive news. Last but not least, uh, cryptocurrency together with politics uh, on a different perspective. F FTX executive revealed as big donor to Oregon Democrats following misidentification. What can I say here? Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? Um, we see now cryptocurrency, I mean, this is a good example of cryptocurrency leaders uh, um, giving funds uh, to specific politicians. Now, a perfect example was Elon Musk uh, when he talked about politics. Uh, we saw other people talking about politics. Uh, can it be divisive? Can it be good? Is there something behind it uh, when it comes to policy? In this case, uh, the donation went directly to a state uh, politician or political party, not on the federal level. We're gonna see, we're gonna see how this will play out, uh, if we will see more of these kind of actions in the future, as well as the effects. Will people start investing based on uh, the political side of um, cryptocurren cryptocurrencies, or will they just focus just on the product, on the product and the blockchain itself? It's just, I just wanted to mention it because uh, it's interesting to see that I wouldn't call it lobbying. I would, yeah. it's also some sort of lobbying, but um, if politics, how politics is getting into the cryptocurrency game. Now, honestly, I have no opinion on this, um, but you can make the choice. I just wanted to give out information. just wanted to say how the two are coming together little by little. And this is a perfect example, not only from a legislation standpoint, but also from a political party standpoint directly. You guys, that's all for now. If you like what I'm doing, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or would like me to add some other information, articles, Reddit, uh, um, data and stuff, please let me know on my Instagram and my videos. Thank you for watching. Ciao.